Hello, and welcome to a very special presentation, Liberia Calls. This is part one of two. Today we introduce you to missionary Don Riley. Don and his wife Melanie are Ohio natives who along with their children have been serving the Lord in Liberia since 2013. Get ready to be shocked by what you hear. Saving children from murder, facing witch doctors head on, and trusting God's hand through every step and every task. Here's Bob Placey. If I challenge you to find Liberia on a map, or if I challenge you to tell me what continent is, is, is it in, could you do that? Well, with me today is Don Riley, and he's a country director for Hope for Home Ministries, mm -hmm. and been in Liber Liberia how many years? Well, since 2013. 2000. Put us, put us in Liberia. Just where, where is it, and, and tell okay. me a little bit about the country just to start with. Uh, Liberia is in West Africa, mm -hmm. um, and... Uh, it is one of the poorest places on earth. Um, when uh, your audience thinks of Liberia, um, uh, imagine dirt roads, imagine uh, mud houses, um, imagine uh, thatched roofs. It is a very, very poor place. So it's what we used to see in the old movies, the safari movies in Africa. Mm -hmm. it, is, it is out in the bush. We're in the bush. You, and you're, you're in the bush. You're in a, you're in a, a little town called Bonga. 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 And you go out from there deeper into the bush. Deeper right? into the bush. We minister on Coco Ya Road. Coco Ya. Yeah, I saw that on one of your one of your uh, one of the drawings of the maps. I saw that road going out of there. Yes. And well, we minister in in uh, Bonga. Mm -hmm. That's where our headquarters would be. Uh, in the last five years, we've been ministering up and down Coco Ya Road, and we've established also a base. Um, or a ministry point in a, in a bush town called Denta. So when you go to a country like Liberia, do you, do you establish the, uh, the, focal, the focus on, on the different ministries you're setting up? Does that come from Hope for Home Ministries? Or do you just see the need that's hmm. there and say, okay, we need to build whatever out here in the bush? I went into Liberia to train pastors. Ah. I really thought that was the assignment that mm -hmm. the Lord was going to give me to do. Um, and it's amazing because what I find myself doing is everything that I'm not gifted at doing. I, I went in to train pastors, but uh, uh, the needs of children, the needs of um, special needs children, mm -hmm. the medical needs are, are so huge um, mm -hmm. that my attention has been diverted off of uh, training pastors. Now we are training pastors, but we're training pastors, um, believe it or not, from the ground up. Mm -hmm. We're going to, uh, we have a school, and um, I hope we can get yeah, into talking yeah. about that, but yeah. the vision there is if we do our job properly in discipling these children that we're raising up pastors future for pastors. future generations, yeah. and every year we can be graduating um, right. Christian leaders out of our school. Well, one thing for sure is when, when God shows you some of these other things that you're not equipped to do, hmm. you're definitely going to count on God to get it done, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's miracle after miracle when I look through the, uh, the YouTube videos, and you're on YouTube, and, and uh, the, the photos you've sent. But one of them is Erica's story. Tell me, tell me about, about her and, and uh, why that's such a, a kind of a, uh, the epitome of what's going on in Liberia. Okay. Um, well, uh, to tell Erica's story is to tell one, one area of ministry mm -hmm. focus of our, our mission. We really have three, three ministry focuses. Um, and Erica's story really is deeply rooted in, in Liberia's um, belief system of, uh, of special needs children. Um, special needs children are viewed as being demons, devils, and... Uh, and, and, and snakes. Hmm. Um, to, to put it in context, to let you know, uh, many people have a phobia of snakes. Mm -hmm. I do. <laughs> you do. <laughs> um, when you see a snake, many people, they, where's a stick? I want to kill it. Yeah. Um, and when I say that they believe that they're demons, devils, and snakes, I, it is absolutely the truth. They, that the feeling that, that um, maybe in some people to kill the snake when they see it is the same feeling that they get to, to kill special needs children. So if a child grows up in a two or three years old and can't walk mm -hmm. and just drags themselves around, they're going to think it's some kind of a demon and it's a snake. They snake. say this child has, can do nothing for me. Um, it, the child is useless. 
Uh, wow. The a special needs child is viewed as a curse on a family, and a family that chooses to keep a special needs child is viewed as a curse on the community. And um, the community, then if it chooses to allow the child to live, is viewed as a cursed community. Um, and so these children are killed in the oh. bush. It's, uh, uh, there are laws that protect against them, but in the bush, mm -hmm. the law of the bush is what wins. Yeah. So you found Eric, or heard about Eric, tied to a tree? Tied to a tree. That's right. Um, oh my goodness, there she is right there. Oh, that's horrible. And so what happened um, is uh, we, uh, one of the people that we buy chicken feed from, he went to his, his hometown and in his hometown he uh, uh, saw that this video, exactly mm -hmm. what happened there. And um, yeah. he took a video of it and came to us and said, is there anything you can do? Um, what had happened is the mother had gone into the bush and the community had taken her and strapped her to the tree. She was being flogged. Um, the mother had been told many times to kill the child. Um, and, uh, you know, it's just hard to imagine this exists when you're in America. Yeah, it's just <clears throat> impossible. But the, the, the needs of the special needs children in Liberia, it's like a modern day Holocaust going on. And um, the, the children are not protected. Uh, the, the, if, there's a, um, if a case was brought to the police, it will never go to trial. Um, everyone understands why you would get... The law of the bush. The law of the bush. The belief is that the mother was out too late at night. And uh, while she was out, the spirit of her baby in her womb um, left the womb and interacted with the evil spirits. Mm -hmm and received on itself the due punishment or the penalty um, for its own wickedness. And, and that is the marks that, of the special needs um, that the child has on, on their body. So was this the, the, the first of these children that you that you dealt with? Erica? No. So there's, there's many of them. It's very sad. And it, what, 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 is, what has God called you to do with, I mean, in, the, in this <clears throat> case, I mean, you can't just take one child after another. And, What's God called you to do hmm. with this? Uh, in one word, God has called us to love. Oh, there's some of them right there. Um, yeah. God has called us to love. We must love. And love will not sit back. And love will not be quiet. We have to respond in love. And um, one of the difficult parts of, of this, like you just mentioned, um, you can't take them all, but we will take every child that is going to be put to death. We will take them because there's no other option for them. And what, what's been your response there? Because you, you take them, you have to have facilities to do this. The facility that we have mm -hmm. is um, we have a village that we've started to build. Um, first, Yeah, there it is there. Yeah, that, that is... Um, that's his safe haven village. Now, was that, was that built with work and witness teams from the states, or is that built by local labor? We had some teams come from mm -hmm. the states um, to, uh, to assist in painting and things, but largely the local labor. Wow. Bef before, um, before we had a village, we didn't wait to we have a village to start meeting mm -hmm. needs. Um, you meet the needs with, with the with tools you that you have in your mm -hmm. hand. Uh, we, um, we, part, we are partnered together with this organization called His Safe Haven. And so your, oh, okay. your viewers can look at them online. It is a wonderful partnership. Um, but at first we, we went and we rented a facility um, because you can't just let, yeah. let the children go. Um, we hire widows um, to care for orphan children. Mm -hmm. um, and the widows we train f to do things like therapy and uh, wow. to meet their needs. The widows um, are allowed to come. Um, um, they, br they come into the village. Well, at the time it was the apartments, but now mm -hmm. it's the village. And um, they raise, raise the children there. But um, we believe it is God's design for children to be raised in families. Mm -hmm. 
not by institutions. How do you get, if you're bringing in widows to raise these children, how do you get them past the whole cultural thing of the demons? And uh, are these people that you've discipled in the past? Um, and so our interviewing process is very detailed. Mm -hmm. um, and we spend a lot of time in our interviewing process to, to know the beliefs. Um, we, want, we want to establish Christian homes Sure. And, and so then we have to really look at the mothers. First of all, are you a Christian? And second of all, what's your belief in, mm -hmm. in the cause of this disability that the child is, is suffering with? And so there's a, a large uh, amount of time that's spent in um, selecting our mothers. Mm -hmm. um, so the mothers can come um, into the village when, when they're hired. Um, and our goal is to establish a family um, because it is God's design for children sure. to be raised in a family. And so how do we do that? Um, the mother, the widow, is allowed to bring up to three of her family's children into the village with them. Um, and, and that creates family in itself sure. just because the mm -hmm. mother then has um, some family children. And then we place three or four um, special needs children in the house with her and uh, we built the village. Yes. Every house represents a mother, uh, a widow, uh, mm -hmm. to care for the children. And so that's, that's the village there. That, that's a massive undertaking. I mean, f for you and, and the ministry, the village itself, but to put a, a, a widow in there with five or six kids and some of those are special needs, mm -hmm. God's got to have an anointing on some of these mothers. Yes, the, our mothers are... <laughs> to, to do that kind of work. Yeah, they're, they're absolute... Absolutely. I mean, some families can't, can't deal with, with uh, one child that has needs like that. That is amazing. There's a nice <laughs> That's a great picture. That is a picture of Erica, believe it or not, the girl that was strapped to the tree. Oh, um, so our hard. team went in and uh, we, um, we rescued her. Um, this is all within the last month, by the way. Mm. Um, we wow. rescued her. Um, we took her her parents to the local police station, had them sign rights over. Um, and that is how children are welcomed into our village. What you just saw on the, on the TV screen, there's a picture of um, our team in the bush. Um, Christina um, is holding Erica oh, and um, in the bush, uh, talking to the community. Now, the, even in meeting in an environment like that where our team has gone in um, to rescue her, the, the town is, they're just like, they're ready to, they're ready to go. They're, 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 there's, they, there's persecution against these kids and persecution against the mother. So rescuing Eric is one thing. How many children you think uh, that you've brought into the village? How many have you actually rescued in that way? Every child was oh. in the process of being put to death. Oh my goodness. How, um, many, how many kids are there now? We have 30. Let's see, we, we mm -hmm. brought in, this month, we brought in four more children. Um, and so we have, I think it's, we're up to 30, 36, I think. Do you, do you see any hope in, in these villages with that kind of a belief system of, uh, how do you bring Christ into a village like that to where this isn't something that's ongoing? Um, we cannot forget the gospel has the power to save. Right. Um, there was a time in my life where I was incredibly discouraged mm -hmm. and uh, I had a friend come and visit me and um, I poured my heart out to him. I said, everyone here, I, I don't know a Liberian ha who hasn't stolen from me, who hasn't, mm -hmm. who hasn't uh, lied to me and uh, taken advantage of me. Um, I give up on the adults and um, I'm turning my heart to the children. We, maybe we can raise up the mm -hmm. next generation. And he told me, Don, um, this is Jason Nightingale. Um, the moment we forget that the, po the gospel has the power to change a life is the time where we need to remove ourselves from the mission field. Mm. And I thanked him. I said, um, I needed to hear that. Yeah. And so um, we must not forget our, our battle is not against flesh and blood. Right. Um, we are truly engaged in a spiritual battle, but the battle is, is against the devil mm -hmm. and against... Um, the spiritual forces of evil, the, the Bible says in Ephesians. And mm -hmm. so... Wow, that, that is an amazing story. And, and that it doesn't stop there. I mean, you've got several points of ministry besides just the village. 
Yes. Um, let's stay on the village for a second sure. longer. Um, one of the most difficult things we have to do in the village, um, special needs parents, they all want to give up their children. Um, and even, well, even... They want you to buy their children? No. Are they looking for something? They, they just want them out of there? They want them out. Okay. Um, and even if a mother loves a child, she will want to give up the child to a better life that is found inside our village. So how do we choose which ones to take yeah. and which ones not to take? Well, first of all, there's not a lot of special needs children in Liberia because most of them are killed, um, at least nice. in the bush. Um, and so um, one of the most difficult cha um, challenges that we're faced with is to sit down and interview the parent and try mm -hmm. to decide, is this child's life in danger? If, um, if we were to say no, are they gonna take the child out and kill the, mm -hmm. kill the child? Or is this child um, safe? And so we're looking at, um, you know, is the child malnourished? How is the mother holding the child? Um, just looking for any mm -hmm. signs of affection. Sure. And, and, and because we truly believe that God does not make mistakes. Mm -hmm. A special needs child is not a mistake. God, uh, the Bible says, knit us together in our mother's womb. And, and he does not make mistakes. My brother has Down syndrome. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, he has been used in a profound way in my own life. Mm -hmm. And... Um, and my father. And so um, we tried to convince the parents to keep the children, um, but we're always got that tug of war in our sure. heart. Is this child going to be safe or is this mm -hmm. child going to be killed when they leave the, the, our office? And unfortunately, we haven't always made the right call there. Sometimes we thought the child would be safe and then we find out the child was oh. removed from our office and was murdered. What a heartbreak. That's, but at that point in time, you go on with what God's showing you and what's in front of you as, as far as the rest of the children. So the needs don't stop. The yeah. needs don't stop. And one uh, challenging thing for the missionaries on the ground there is the needs don't stop. And we, you, you have a crisis and then you're presented with another need. And so mm -hmm. you can take time and grieve for the price, crisis, but you have to There's go on and, and do the best right. with the next opportunity Continue that's put in front of you. And what, what's God showing you in, in some of these opportunities? And I mean, as, as you move from the, uh, the village to some of the other things you're doing in the bush. Okay. Dentatown mm -hmm. is um, a town that was largely dedicated to Satan. Uh, um, it's a place that shortly before we went in there was still doing human sacrifices. Um, oh my goodness! In fact, they can take you to the tree wow. and show you where the human sacrifices were taking place. It's a place where children are still um, initiated into this wicked society wow. called the Secret Society, um, in which they're dedicated to Satan. Um, it's it's uh, Dentatown is a place that's never had a school, and um, and it's a place of extreme need. Um, we went into Dentatown because we saw the need that was present, mm -hmm. the need, first of all, for the Lord Jesus Christ, um, but the need for the gospel. Um, the Bible says that the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And so in Dentatown, a place that's dedicated its, its existence really to following these wicked yeah. practices, you, you should expect to see um, stealing, killing, mm -hmm. and destroying. That's exactly what you see mm -hmm. in Dentatown. When we went into Dentatown, the, the month before we went, we decided to start a mission there. Um, uh, three children had died um, from preventable um, illnesses. Mm -hmm. and, and so when we were going into town, we're, we're assessing where, I didn't want to just go and do ministry. And I want to go and do ministry where I'm needed the most. Mm -hmm. Don't go where you're needed, go where you're needed the most. And so we were looking at going to a place that, that needed Christ the most. And so we were just going and looking at the needs. What are the needs that are present? And when we walked into Dentatown, we, we walked up to fresh graves, little tiny graves from, from children um, who had died. And our team... Um, 
uh, just the Lord leading our team uh, made, made a decision that Dentatown is the place that, that we had to get established. Um, we uh, uh, saw the need for Dentatown, um, and I, I just, I really want to challenge your viewers um, to, to step out in faith, and, um, and even if you don't have the supplies you need to get the job done, if God is calling you to do something, you need to step out and you need to be obedient. Yeah. Um, Dentatown is an absolute miracle. It, it is a story of God's provision, and it's a, also a story of incredible spiritual battle where... I can't imagine what it would be. I mean, it's just when you, when you talk about something dedicated to Satan, he's not going to give it up. No, he's not going to give it up. And so um, from day one in, in Dentatown, um, we, the kingdom of God has been moving forward oh, at, at extreme battle and extreme cost mm -hmm. is what Dentatown has been. Um, the school was started as a work of God. It was absolutely a miracle. So you started with a general education type school? Um, yes. And they had no school at the time? They had, everyone in the town's illiterate. Okay. And so um, the school was started. Uh, we, we believe God was calling us, but we didn't have money. Mm -hmm. we, had, um, we didn't have money. And that's, that's fine and dandy when you're <laughs> six months out and you're saying, we're going to do this in six months because you think God has time He's going to he's provide. Going to provide something, yeah. He's going to. He's not going to leave us hanging. Um, and so we made plans. We have this action plan. We're working the plan, and um, you start getting uh, about four months out, and you still don't have money. Then you start saying, "Okay, this is getting scary." Um, you you get a few months out, like three months out, and you're beginning to interview teachers because you have to bring teachers sure. in from the outside. Indented. There's no no one's educated. No one can teach. No one can teach because they can't read. And so, um, so now we're interviewing um, people uh, to start this school, uh, interviewing principals, interviewing all that all that kind of stuff. And literally, we have no money. We have a, 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 you're hiring a, people, but don't have any money. Don't have any money. Um, yeah. That's faith. But it's also th this is a question I began to ask our team. What is the difference between walking by faith and being irresponsible? It's a fine line. It's a very fine line because God in his word, he tells us if you, who will, will build a tower without mm -hmm. counting the costs. And so on one hand, we are called by God to count the cost. But on the other hand, if you have the faith the size of a mustard seed, you can move the mountains. Yeah. And so how do you put the two together to meet a very legitimate and real mm -hmm. need. And so our team, um, we interviewed people and we still had no money. We kept praying, oh Lord, please. <laughs> um, and You've got the cattle on a thousand hills, you can- You can give us something, yeah, something. <laughs> something to start. And, um, and so our team, uh, we, we were, uh, it came down to, the, to it's a go or no go time. Mm -hmm. And we had to make a decision um, to either go or, or to stay behind. And, um, and so we were praying and I came up with this great idea. Why don't I call the United States and I'll talk to our treasurer and see what's in our, what's the balance in our account. And, um, and so I called and we had just paid our salaries for the month. And so we had just had a large, um, outgoing mm -hmm. of funds. And she said, you have $12 in your account. Um, what did your heart do at that point? My heart is wrestling with the Lord. Oh yeah. And um, $12? Um, that so, won't even go very far in Liberia. <laughs> no, it goes nowhere. Um, so I walked back in to the team. I, and these team, this team is made up of Liberians. I said, you guys, what is the difference between walking by faith and being irresponsible? Um, and so we were still, we prayed, and um, the team uh, unanimously voted. Um, one team member said, I, I believe God is calling us. You can have my paycheck. We can. We have to go oh, in. We have to meet this not. need. Another uh, team member uh, said, um, "I believe God is not only calling us um, to serve Him, but to suffer for His namesake." And so, with twelve dollars in our pocket, we began uh, a school, and and it's a miracle what God has done um, in that. Um, so the the rest of the story is um, I I put a blog post out. Um, and I asked people in America if they would advocate for uh, five children and try to find sponsors mm -hmm. for five children. 
and within a week's time we had a hundred sponsored children Praise and God, God provided the funds that we needed to start. Well, that is an amazing story, but you had the funds to start. What about the sustaining of a, of, a, of a school like this? I mean, you've got to have a building, you've got to have the teachers okay. ongoing, you've got to have a curriculum. And, Our first building, and books and, um, we had no money. So you begin with what you have. Um, and uh, we took the sticks from the bush and we, we made a daubed uh, schoolhouse with thatched roof. We packed mud and, and literally our first building cost a couple packs of nails and we began school that way. As the school grew, we moved into um, sheds in the town, like a little, little, any place in town that we could find place to, to cram mm -hmm. kids, we crammed them in. And eventually God provided money to build a school building. But even at that, this, today we're doing school there, but on dirt floors dirt. without windows being finished. Use the tools that you have to get the job done yeah. is, is the thing. And so how, how many teachers do you have now? Uh, we offer up to the sixth grade now. Wow. And so we... That is amazing. We, every year we are increasing a grade mm -hmm. level. And our vision, it, why do we do school? Um, we do school to make disciples. Um, and we believe that if we do our job successfully, if we're effective, that our disciples, um, by, by the time they graduate, they ought to be trained um, to lead mm -hmm. in ministry. And so we do, we are training the kids, but we also are reprogramming. I mean, they're coming, they go home to parents that are initiating them in, into the secret society or trying to, to do that. Um, then they come to school and hear about Jesus, Jesus. Christ. And, um, and the, the tool that we're using to do that um, is, uh, it, we're, we're calling it the wordless Bible. And, um, it's, uh, we have Bible pictures that, um, we have an artist that draws pictures for every verse of the Bible. And literally wow. every day at school, our children memorize one more verse of the Bible. And, um, uh, and through this Bible memory, literally our, our children are quoting the, the, wow. the New Testament. By the time they graduate out of, out of our school, they will have memorized the majority of the New Testament. God has been so good, but at the same time, the work goes on. Like you said, it's one thing after another. It never mm -hmm. ceases. There's much to learn about Hope for Home Ministries and the work being done in Liberia. We're just getting started. Tune in again next week at this same time for part two in Bob's interview with missionary Don Riley. Don Riley is available to speak at local churches, house meetings, or anywhere that this message of Jesus restoration needs to be heard. He is currently in the Ohio area, specifically based out of Troy, but is willing to travel. Contact him at don at hopeforhome.org. You can also find his blog at liberiacalls.blogspot.com. Or you can call us here at TV44 and I will help connect you with Don Riley. I'm Jennifer Beck. Thanks for watching part one in our special series, Liberia Calls.